afternoon. My name is David Smith. I'm the chair of the Toronto General Western Hospital Foundation Board of Directors, and it's my privilege to welcome all of you here this afternoon. We're going to begin this, today's meeting uh, with a one of our popular behind-the-scenes uh, lectures uh, uh, given by Dr. Graham Trope on shedding light on glaucoma. And I'd like to call upon uh, our foundation board volunteer, uh, our vision campaign champion and donor, Donald K. Johnson, to introduce Dr. Trope. Don. Thank you, David, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to welcome you here today to this behind-the-scenes lecture presented by the Toronto General and Western Hospital Foundation. I'm delighted to see so many wonderful, what a wonderful turnout for this particular lecture as it covers a topic that is very close to both my heart and my eyes. And I mention that because I have glaucoma and I happen to be a patient of Dr. Tropes. Well, as many of you know, glaucoma is the second leading cause of blindness in North America. Fortunately, at Toronto Western Hospital, our glaucoma researchers have established a reputation for excellence. Our presenter today, Dr. Graham Trope, has devoted his entire professional career to building that reputation. Dr. Trope is an acclaimed ophthalmologist, researcher, and educator. His specialty is the treatment and management of glaucoma. He has a long and distinguished CV. In the interest of time, I will mention a few highlights of his career. Dr. Trope has served as Director of Glaucoma Services at Toronto Western since 1984. That's 25 years. He's published over 150 scientific articles, chiefly in the area of glaucoma and the treatment of this debilitating disease. He's the founder and scientific director of the Glaucoma Research Society of Canada and the past editor-in-chief of the Canadian Journal of Ophthalmology. In addition to his extensive clinical and research pursuits, Dr. Trope has played an invaluable role in educating the next generation of eye care specialists. He is currently professor of ophthalmology at the University of Toronto and past chairman of the department. Dr. Trope has trained more than 30 glaucoma fellows from around the world and is a past examiner for the Well College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. He has won a number of awards, including the Ontario College of Physicians and Surgeons Council Award for his contributions to patient care. We are extremely fortunate and appreciative that he has taken time from his very busy schedule to share his impressive knowledge on the subject of glaucoma. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce Dr. Graham Cook. Thanks, Don, for those terrific words. I just wish my mother had been here to hear this. You know, she wouldn't have believed it. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, glaucoma has a very well-deserved reputation for being termed the thief in the night. If you don't take precautions against this thief, it will come and steal your vision. And that's what this scary picture is meant to show. There's a thief over there and there's darkness all around. And that what, that's really what happens if glaucoma isn't taken seriously. Now, to fight against glaucoma, you have to understand the disease. And I'm going to try and give you a bit of an overview in a very short period of time as to what the disease is, how we diagnose it, and what's going on with regard to glaucoma research at this institution. So let's get started. What is glaucoma? Well, when we talk about glaucoma, we're usually referring to a condition called primary open angle glaucoma. That's by far the commonest type of glaucoma. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. However, please be aware there are other kinds. 
there's glaucoma associated with trauma, there's glaucoma associated with diabetes, there's a form of glaucoma called acute glaucoma that occurs particularly in Chinese patients, but the main kind is primary open angle glaucoma. Now primary open angle glaucoma is unfortunately a painless condition. That's important for you to understand. So it doesn't cause you any symptoms whatsoever. No aches or pains, no blurriness, no symptoms at all. And that's one of the reasons why many people don't attend for an eye exam. It's associated with very specific changes in the eye. And these changes include loss of peripheral vision, not central vision. So again, please understand, it's not your central vision that's affected with this disease. It's your side vision. And again, most people are not aware. They don't stand there testing their side vision, right? It's uh, a big problem. People don't know they have the disease. And it's characterized by specific changes to the nerve at the back of the eye called the optic nerve. So here are three pictures for you. The top one is a patient who has very early glaucoma and is driving their car. And perhaps you can see that they can easily see the fire hydrant across the street. Can everybody see that up there? <laughs> good. If not, I think I know of a good ophthalmologist. <laughs> Number two picture is a patient who has early glaucoma. And can you see that they're beginning to loo th lose their side vision, but they can still see the fire hydrant as they drive along. But look what happens in advanced glaucoma. I think you'll see they can still see the fire hydrant, but look what's happened to the stop sign on the side of the road. And can you imagine if there's a child uh, or a soccer ball comes shooting across and a little kid comes running out, you're not going to see that child until they're right in front of you. And that's the problem with visual field loss. Now, I'm going to try and show you this uh, in a little more detail. Um, and I'd like you to, uh, let's see if we can get this working. Yeah. I'd like you to look very carefully at the eye. Because you're going to see some changes happen in the optic nerve. And look what happens with advanced glaucoma as it progresses. Let me show that to you again. Let's see. Oh rewind and we'll play it. So you get this particular cupping or atrophy of the optic nerve and as this occurs loss of vision above, as it occurs loss of vision down below until eventually the patient is left with a tiny little central island of vision and complete loss of side vision. And again this particular patient will be able to see my nose quite easily but won't be able to see my ears. And that, again, is the tragedy of the disease because people don't know they have it until it's very, very late. So, you then want to know, are you at risk of glaucoma? What are the risk factors for glaucoma? And I think many of you in this room will know that the major risk for glaucoma is high pressure in the eye. Is that correct? Most people, I think, may know that. However, not everybody with high eye pressure gets glaucoma, funnily enough. And you can get glaucoma with very low pressure. So, it's only a risk factor, high eye pressure. That's all it is. A very important risk factor is family history. If you have a family history, a brother or sister or mother or father, you have an eight times higher chance of getting this disease. So if you're sitting in this room, and I know many of my patients are here today, Remember that your children are at serious risk of getting this disease. It's passed on in a recessive fashion. They need to be checked, particularly as they get a bit older. It's very common in certain ethnic groups, particularly in our Afro-Canadian population group, in people from the Caribbean and from Africa, and it's a major cause of blindness in Africa. This is a very serious problem.